Hello, and welcome to the Deluxe Paint 4 video guide. During the next hour, we will be showing you many of Deluxe Paint 4's numerous features and give you helpful tips for using them in your particular application. We'll discuss the different graphic modes available, the various tools and how to use them, how to select and mix colors from the palette, how to paint simple designs, create custom brushes, animations, and more. Deluxe Paint 4 is an upgraded and enhanced version of Electronic Arts' premier color paint program for the Amiga. Its improved and more versatile range of paint and animation features were designed to meet the basic needs of amateur artists while satisfying the rigorous requirements of graphics and video professionals. While this video will be informative, it is not intended to be a replacement for your manual. Also, we will assume that you know your way around your Amiga. If you just recently acquired your computer, familiarize yourself with the Amiga terminology and techniques before using Deluxe Paint 4. After you spend a little time watching our examples, feel free to pause the tape and try them out for yourself, or to read in your manual more about a particular feature or tool. Refer back to this tape or your manual as you see fit. You'll find that you'll be able to use D-Paint 4 to create colorful graphics and animations in a fraction of the time it would take with any other program. Remember, the more you watch, read, and experiment, the more you will get out of Deluxe Paint 4. In this segment, we'll be giving you a brief tour of the Deluxe Paint 4 user interface. But first, you should understand the different graphic modes that are available for you to paint in. First, we'll explain the difference between the NTSC mode and the PAL mode. NTSC is the video standard used in North America and Japan, and PAL is the video standard for Europe. D-Paint will automatically default to the correct type for your system. Some screen resolutions have a limited number of colors available. Here's a chart which shows the possible combinations. The screen size, resolution, and number of colors you choose depends on your personal preference and the final application you have in mind for your artwork. When choosing the number of colors, D-Paint will restrict you to selecting a palette size that is available in the graphic mode that you choose. In the 64 color mode, called Half Bright, you have a base set of 32 colors with an additional 32 colors which are half the intensity of the first 32. Half bright 64 colors are available in either low resolution or interlace modes. A graphic mode now available with the release of Deluxe Paint 4 is the hold and modify mode, also known as HAM. In either low res or interlace modes, when HAM is selected, the Amiga can display all 4096 of its colors on the screen. Let's take a look at some of the possible combinations. Notice the changes to this familiar graphic to better understand how mode selection affects the look of your artwork. The next decision to be made is to choose whether you want overscan and the amount. The two types of overscan are standard and maximum. This is used to extend the drawing area to the edge of the screen, providing a larger canvas to paint on. Standard will usually be large enough to hide the edges, but maximum is provided to ensure that the screen is as large as possible for creating professional videos and slide presentations. The final decision to be made is whether or not the program should load completely into memory or swap in the various elements as needed. While swapping uses less memory, loading the entire program at the start will provide quicker operation. Now that you understand the different graphic modes, let's take a moment to enter D-Paint so that you may become familiar with the arrangement of its various tools and elements. Well, now that we're in the Deluxe Paint program, we can see its basic elements. The painting screen is your canvas or paper. It's where you'll create, color, edit, and manipulate your art. The toolbox contains the brushes, shape tools, and tool modifiers you'll use to create and edit your artwork. You can select a tool by clicking on it. The palette contains the colors representing a portion of your current color spectrum. You select the color you want to paint with from the palette. 
The number of colors in the palette depends on the screen format you are using. Directly above the palette is the color indicator. The two rectangles display the colors you're currently using to paint. The title bar shows the name of the program and the current brush mode. It also reports whether or not you are using certain program options. For example, if you choose to see the coordinates of the mouse, the current fill type or angles of rotation, you can turn those features on and see that they are active in the title bar. Whenever you move the cursor to the title bar, the cursor changes into a pointer. By holding down the right mouse button, the menu bar replaces the title bar and you see a row of menus. Menus provide access to the save and load requesters, as well as many of DPaint 4's special capabilities. Now that you understand the different graphic modes and DPaint 4's basic layout, we can move on. In the upcoming segments, we will explain each tool and menu item in greater detail. Now, how do I get out of here? In the last segment, you saw Deluxe Paint 4's basic layout. Now we will explain how to select, modify, and use the tools to draw basic shapes or otherwise manipulate an image. We will include a notation of any keyboard equivalents where appropriate. The toolbox located on the right side of the screen contains the brushes, shape tools, and tool modifiers you'll use to create and edit your artwork. You can select a brush, tool, or color by clicking on it. Once selected, it will be highlighted. The Deluxe Paint Toolbox includes 10 built-in brushes. You can enlarge or reduce the size of the current brush. Press the Equals key to increase its size and the Minus key to reduce it. The ten icons below the built-in brushes control the painting tools. Because any brush can operate with any given painting tool, you have a wide variety of combinations at your fingertips. The dotted freehand tool allows fast freehand drawing. No matter how fast you draw, this tool keeps up with you, making it ideal for sketching out a shape quickly. The continuous freehand tool paints unbroken lines, but cannot keep up with you if you draw fast. Notice that the continuous freehand tool icon has a diagonal line running through it. This is because it is actually two tools in one, the top left one selecting unbroken freehand lines, while the one at the bottom right selects filled freehand shapes. By clicking on the fill portion of any shape tool with the right mouse button, a fill type requester will appear. This is where you select the effect to be used when filling a shape. Solid fills with the current foreground color when using the left mouse button. Brush fills with one image of the current custom brush and sizes it to fit the filled area. Wrap fills with the current custom brush and adjusts it to give the illusion of wrapping the brush around a 3D solid. Perspective fills with a pattern of the current brush in the current perspective setting, which we'll explain in greater detail later on. H-Bright fills with a half-bright painting mode this effect is a special form of tinting that only works in half-bright mode. When you're not in half-bright mode, this option does not appear in the requester. Pattern fills with a pattern made from a brush. To use this option, you must first click the From Brush button to create a pattern of the current custom brush. This pattern remains the current fill pattern until you click From Brush again to create a new one. Range fills an enclosed object with a spread of colors from a selected range. Type in the number of the range you wish to use. We will discuss how to create ranges later on. Select one of the fill options to specify the direction and type of gradient fill. The horizontal and vertical gradient fills with an even distribution. Horizontal line paints the gradient one line at a time and adjusts the gradient on each line so that it follows the contours of the shape being filled. In these next fill types, you will see that you have much greater control of the gradient's direction. Here is a sample screen which shows each of the circular and linear fill types. Line fills the object with a uniform linear gradient, ignoring the shape of the object. Shaped fills the object with a linear gradient, 
taking the shape of the object into account, so gradient lines tend to follow the object's contours. Circular fills the object with a circular gradient, radiating outward from the point where you click, and does not take the shape of the object into account. Contour fills the object with a gradient taking the shape of the object into account. This creates a contour effect, reminiscent of topographical maps. Highlight is similar to contour, but optimized to create a highlight effect. Like contours, the object is filled with a shape taken into account. Deluxe Paint draws patterned gradients by dithering, which reduces the contrast between adjacent colors without changing the colors themselves. When random is checked, you can adjust the degree of color mixing in the gradient fill. Drag the dither slider left or right to decrease or increase the amount of dither. Setting the slider all the way to the left eliminates mixing between shades. Moving the slider to the right increases the amount of mixing at color boundaries. That covers the fill type requester. As I mentioned earlier, this same requester is used for all tool types which fill, including rectangle, circle, ellipse, and area fill. Let's continue describing the tools. The straight line tool lets you draw straight lines of any length and angle. Much like accessing the fill type requester that you saw a moment ago, right clicking the straight line tool displays the spacing requester. Let's take just a moment to describe the different settings. Here are four lines which show each of the line types. N total defines the total number of brush stamps that will occur along the line. Every nth dot spacing sets the number of pixels between each brush stamp. This uses as many evenly spaced stamps as necessary. Airbrush paints using an airbrush effect along the path defined by any tool affected by the spacing requester. Continuous, which is the default setting, paints an unbroken path with no space between pixels. Just as with the fill type setting, the line spacing requester applies to all line oriented tools except freehand drawing. The curve tool draws a curved line between two points on the painting area using the current line type setting. The fill tool fills any enclosed shape with the current fill type setting or background color. Deluxe Paint also has a full featured airbrush with adjustable tips and nozzles. Right clicking on the airbrush tool will allow you to set the size of the spray pattern. By using the airbrush in combination with different brushes, you can create a variety of effects ranging from a fine one pixel spray to a coarse spray made with big brushes. The rectangle tool lets you draw squares or rectangles. As with other tools, you can draw either unfilled shapes using any brush or filled shapes. The circle tool paints a circle or disc centered around the position you select. The ellipse tool works just like the circle tool, except that you can adjust its height and width. When the ellipse is the shape and size you want, you can rotate your ellipse until it has just the right tilt. The polygon tool lets you keep drawing straight lines until you have created an enclosed figure. The brush selector is a special tool that is an essential part of Deluxe Paint's versatility. With the brush selector, anything can be a brush, a piece of artwork, or text on the screen. Simply drag a frame around the area you wish to pick up. If you double click the brush selector, its icon changes so you can select the area to be picked up with a polygon shape. Right clicking on the brush selector will restore you to your last custom brush. Deluxe Paint's text editor lets you place text anywhere on the page. Type on the keyboard to enter text in the current foreground color, or in some special cases, a font specified color. To exit text mode, press escape or click a painting tool. Right clicking the text tool displays the choose font requester. Use this requester to choose fonts, sizes, and styles for your text. To choose a font, click on its name. Choose a size for the font by clicking on the up and down arrows next to the size edit box. Clicking the show button loads the currently selected font from disk and displays a sample of the current font in the show window of the requester. Choose a style for the font by clicking on the bold, italic, and underline action buttons. You can use these styles in any combination. Clicking an active highlighted button turns it off. By default, the directory specified is fonts colon. You can specify a new disk drawer for fonts. For example, to use fonts on the art disk, you would type art colon fonts in the drawer edit box and press return. If you choose a color font, such as chisel script, you will be asked if you want to use this font's palette. If you answer yes, it is quite likely that the colors in your current picture will be affected. Otherwise, by selecting no, 
Colors in the font may not be correct. Now, moving on to the tools that do not draw. Rather, they affect the way other tools work or provide some other special capability. The grid lets you apply paint on the page in accordance with an invisible grid and restricts your painting tools to the grid points. The symmetry tool lets you paint symmetrically over the entire page at the same time, rendering a kaleidoscope or tiling effect. Right-clicking on the symmetry tool brings up the symmetry requester. Use this requester to choose between the two symmetry modes and set the parameter for each mode. With Magnify, you can get a close-up look at any section of your work and view it alongside the standard sized image. All of the tools will work in the magnified area. Once you have magnified part of your picture, you can increase or decrease the amount of magnification by clicking the zoom tool with the left or right mouse button. Undo reverses your last action, provided there has not been an intervening mouse click. Click Clear to erase your page to the current background color. The palette contains the colors representing your current color spectrum. This is where you select the color you want to paint with. The number of colors in the palette depends on the screen format you are using. In hand mode, an indicator appears below the palette to show which area of the color set you are viewing. Click on the arrow to step through the 16 groups, or hold the shift key down and click an arrow to go to the first or last group. Directly above the palette is the color indicator. The two rectangles display the colors you are currently using to paint. The inner rectangle shows the foreground color, the color your brush is currently using. This color is selected from the palette with the left mouse button. The outer rectangle shows the current background color which is selected with the right mouse button. This is the color you will erase with. Follow this simple rule. Use the left mouse button for painting and selecting the foreground color and the right mouse button for the background color. To allow you more on-screen space to work with, you can press the F10 key to hide the toolbox and title bar. Keyboard shortcuts can be used to access any of the tools. The toolbox can be redisplayed by simply pressing the F10 key again. And with that, we conclude our overview of the brushes, tools, and on-screen palette. You should now know where to find and how to control any painting tool you might need. As you use Deep Paint, you'll find that working with its tools will become second nature. While you may now be familiar with Deep Paint Forest Toolbox, the program can do much, much more. Many of the capabilities are provided through the pull down menus. Deluxe Paint menus work just like standard Amiga menus. In many cases, you can select a menu item by using its keyboard equivalent. These are indicated to the right of the menu item. A complete table of keyboard equivalents is included in the back of your manual. Before you use a keyboard equivalent, make sure that the cursor is not over the title bar, or your keystroke will have no effect. One keyboard equivalent that deserves special mention that is not shown is A, the Again key. This re-invokes your last menu command, whatever it may have been. We will describe the menus in the order they are displayed, reading from left to right across the menu bar. The picture menu lets you save, load, and print pictures, as well as allowing you to make various global changes to the screen resolution and page format. Load displays the load picture requester. Clicking the disks action button displays the currently loaded disks and volumes. Clicking the parent action button moves you into the parent directory in which the current subdirectory resides. If you click a subdirectory name, you will see all the files in that subdirectory. You can scroll through the windows by clicking the up and down arrow keys or by dragging the scroll bar up and down. If text is entered in the pattern edit box, only file names that contain a match for those characters will be displayed in the requester. Pound question is the wildcard. The load number of frames in the edit box near the bottom of the requester lets you load multiple pictures at one time as frames of a new animation. The pictures must all be in the same format. Save displays the save picture requester. Click in the file edit box and type a name for the picture that you want to save. Click save to save that file. Pictures are saved and reloaded with all their attributes such as palettes, stencils, and perspective information. If you have multiple frames when you open the save picture requester, the bottom portion of the requester will contain frames edit boxes for you to specify which frames of your animation you want to save. 
You enter a file name and specify a drawer just as you would when saving a single picture. The frames are saved as separate pictures with a number automatically added to the end of the file name. Delete displays a requester which lets you delete any file from the disk without leaving the program. Print displays the print picture requester. You have full control of the size, orientation, and other attributes of your printout. Flip lets you flip a picture about its horizontal or vertical axis. The Spare option presents a submenu with options for manipulating Deluxe Paint's hidden spare page. Swap conceals the current page and displays the spare page. This means you have two pages to work on. The concealed page is always considered the spare page. Copy to Spare copies the picture on the current page to the spare page, so you can experiment with your picture on the spare page without fear of losing anything. Merge in Front merges the spare page in front of the current page. Merge in Back merges the spare page in back of the current page. If you no longer wish to have memory allocated for a second spare page, use Delete This Page to delete the currently displayed page. Page Size displays a requester that lets you select a picture size in pixels that you wish to work on. This means you can have a picture that is larger than the visible screen. Use the cursor keys or the N key to move around a picture that is larger than the screen. Show Page hides the toolbox and title bar and displays the entire document in a reduced format. If the page is larger than the screen, you can move the rectangle attached to the cursor to choose the area of the page you wish to work on. Screen Format displays a requester that is slightly different from the one used in Deluxe Paint Startup. If you change the format, you can keep the same overall image size or crop and scale the old image to the new screen size. The Programs About requester shows information about the program and the amount of memory being used. Quit exits Deluxe Paint. Now moving on to the Brush menu. Load and Save open their respective file requesters. They're identical in function to the Load and Save picture requesters, except they're for brushes rather than pictures. Restore recalls the last custom brush you used. The Spare submenu has options for manipulating Deluxe Paint's Spare Brush. Brush to Spare moves the current brush into Spare Brush memory, which is hidden. Brush Swap with Spare swaps the current brush and Spare Brush. Metamorph lets you create a custom animated brush, which will be discussed in detail in the Animation Basics segment of this video. Selecting one of the submenu items from Size lets you resize the current brush. Stretch lets you freely stretch the current custom brush in any direction to any size. Other options let you have, double, double horizontally, and double vertically a custom brush. Flip lets you flip a brush about its horizontal or vertical axis. Edge modifies a one pixel boundary around the current brush. Outline adds a one pixel edge around the current custom brush using the current foreground color while Trim deletes one pixel around the edge of the current brush. Brushes can be rotated by using one of the Rotate submenu items. 90 degrees rotates the current brush clockwise. Any angle lets you freely rotate the current brush to any number of degrees. Shear gives you a skewing control of the current brush. Use the Bend option to arch a brush in the horizontal or vertical direction. Handle lets you specify where the cursor holds a custom brush. Center positions the cursor, which represents the handle, at the center of the brush. Corner positions the arrow cursor at one of the four corners of the brush. Place lets you position the brush handle at any position relative to the brush. The Mode menu contains different painting modes. Most of the modes have keyboard equivalents using the function keys on the top row of the keyboard. Matt uses a custom brush in its original form. Those areas of the brush which match the background color that was in effect when the brush was first created, are transparent. Color uses the shape of the brush, ignoring its actual colors, and only using the current foreground color. Replace uses the custom brush in its original form, except that no colors are transparent. Smear smears any colors on the page when you drag a brush over them. This is like smearing a wet watercolor with your fingers. Shade helps you create subtle shading effects on those colors in your picture that are in a cycling range. If the current foreground color is not in a cycling range, Shade treats the entire palette as a cycle range. Blend, like Smear, affects the colors under the brush by running them together, 
However, Blend uses additional shades by averaging blended colors. Cycle uses the current brush shape and cycles through all the colors in the currently selected range as you draw. A range is selected if one of its members is selected. Smooth softens hard lines and reduces the contrast between adjoining areas. With Mix, the color of your brush mixes interactively with colors already in your image. This is particularly effective in Ham. The H-Bright mode is only available if you are in half-bright mode. When you use H-Bright, painting with the left mouse button darkens the colors on your painting to their half-bright equivalent. Painting with the right mouse button lightens the colors that are half-bright. This mode is especially useful in adding shadow and highlight effects. For now, we'll skip over the Anim menu. Each of the Anim menu items will be covered in detail in the Animation Basics segment of this video. Ranges displays the Range Requester, which you use to define customized color ranges for the color cycling, gradient fill, and shade features of Deluxe Paint. The Requester lets you specify colors in a range and how the colors are mixed. You can define up to eight ranges for each picture. The Range slider indicates the number of the current range. To create a range, select a color to be included. It will appear in the sample square. Position the color bead cursor where you want the selected color to fall in the range and click. The color appears in the range. Select another color and position it also on the bar. Repeat this step until all the colors you want are on the bar. To eliminate a color from the bar, click it, move the bead cursor off the bar and click again. You can reverse the direction of the color range and therefore the direction of cycling and gradients by clicking the reverse action button. Click show to see the results of your color selections and placements. The band beneath the bar shows the gradual transition from color to color. In the non-ham modes, the band above the range requester shows a magnified version of the gradations using only the colors that are available in your base palette. Deluxe Paint can only use colors currently in the palette to make these transitions. If the transitional shades are not in the palette, Colors may appear as discrete or unevenly mixed bands in the range. The rate slider lets you control the speed of color cycling for each range. Clicking on the random button toggles between random and pattern dithering. When random is on, a check mark appears and the blending between any two colors in the gradient is randomly mixed, depending on how the dither slider has been set. Dither is only used when random is selected. Revert returns the range requester to the condition it was before you displayed the requester or you can reverse the last change you made in the palette by clicking undo. Cycle turns color cycling on and off. Color cycling uses the color ranges you defined in the range requester. If a color is not included in a range, it will not cycle. From the palette submenu, you can access the color mixer. You can also display this mixer by right clicking the color indicator in the toolbox. The color mixer is the master control panel. From here you can mix, modify colors, create spreads, and copy or exchange colors. You can work with a 256 color set regardless of the number of colors you actually are using in your current screen format. If you're in a mode other than ham, you can only paint with the colors that are in your base palette. The palette colors are arranged in the first slots of row zero. You can identify them with a white highlight on the top left edge of each color. The other color set colors have a light blue highlight on the top and left edge. In the 64 color extra half bright mode, you cannot modify the colors in row 1. These are the half bright colors and always take the half bright value of the corresponding palette colors in row 0. The color set is merely a holding spot for other colors beyond your base register colors. Deluxe Paint lets you modify colors with either red, green, and blue or hue, saturation, and value color mixing systems. Click the RGB or HSV action button to expose the other. RGB color mixing is the default setting. The HSV method is simply an alternative mixing method. Use the copy button to copy a color from your picture or palette. You can also exchange the position of two colors in the palette. Spread helps you quickly create a spread of shades between two colors. Deluxe Paint uses a uniform spread of colors taking into account the beginning and ending shades and the number of colors in between in your palette. Use Pick to select colors from your picture to use in your color set. Use Delete to remove one or more colors from the color set. You can reverse the last change you made in the color mixer by clicking Undo. Use the mixing area to interactively mix colors to create new ones and, if you wish, add the colors to your palette. 
You can use colors in the picture, colors from the palette, and colors you mix to create new shades. Using your current built-in or custom brush, you can select colors from the palette, one at a time, and paint with them in the mixing area. When you have created a color that you want to use, click the location in the color set where you want to place the new color. Then click the pick button and click the color in the mixing area you wish to make the shade of the new color. You can clear the changes you made in the color mixer by clicking revert. With the exception of the mixing area, this returns the requester to the condition it was in before you displayed the mixer. Arrange shows the arrange requester. It displays all 256 colors of a color set four rows of 32 colors at a time. Clicking on the up and down arrow scrolls through the color set one row at a time. Shift clicking on the arrow scrolls four rows at a time. Arrange is helpful if you want to copy, exchange, or spread colors over more than one row at a time. Use the arrange requester to organize colors in your palette or delete colors. The action buttons in the arrange requester work exactly as they do in the color mixer. When you load a brush from disk, Deluxe Paint continues to use the current picture's palette, even though it may be different from the one the brush was created with. Use Brush Palette switches to the brush palette and includes any information about color cycling that was saved with the brush. Restore Palette returns you to the palette you were using before the current palette. The default palette is the palette Deluxe Paint uses when you first start the program. You can load and save palettes without loading or saving an image. Only the base color registers are affected those colors that appear below the toolbox, not the entire color set. These load and save palette requesters work just like the load and save picture requesters. Color set load and save work just like palette load and save, except the entire 256 color set can be written or read from the disk. Background to foreground changes all pixels that use the current background color to use the current foreground color. Background swap with foreground swaps all pixels in the current background color with the current foreground color. This is similar to background to foreground except that the change occurs in both directions. The change occurs on screen only and does not affect the color palette. If a picture on the screen was created with a palette other than the current palette, for example if you have modified the palette since loading the picture, remap changes all the pixels in a picture to the colors in the new palette that best match the original colors. The recompute option is available only in ham mode if you have loaded a ham image from a different program, recompute may reduce the fringing effects when moving a brush across the screen. Use the options in the brush submenu to modify the current brush colors. The background and foreground items affect the colors of the brush in the same way as they did on screen. The change affects the brush colors only and does not affect the picture or the order of the colors in the palette. Brush remap looks at the colors used in the brush and tries to find the closest fit within the current palette. When this operation is performed on animated brushes, all frames of the anim brush will be remapped. Change transparency lets you change the color that is considered transparent of the current custom brush to the current background color. The effect menu contains several special features. Creating a stencil allows you to paint on an image as though areas of it were protected by a frisket or mask. Show dims the colors in your picture and displays the stenciled areas of your picture, if any, in contrasting lighter colors. The uppercase S in the title bar changes to lowercase. You can't paint on your picture while show is active. Make displays the Make Stencil Requester. When you have selected all the colors that you wish to protect, click Make. The colors you select define a mask that protects an area from being painted over. Clear will clear the current color selections in the requester. You can also invert the current color selections. You can lock newly applied colors by bringing up the Make Stencil Requester and clicking Make or by selecting Remake from the Stencil submenu. Paint uses your current brush to paint the area that you want stenciled. The image under the stencil will be displayed in a halftone mode. When you finish painting a stencil, choose Paint again. Reverse has the same effect as clicking Invert from the Make Stencil Requester. On-Off toggles the stencil on and off. The stencil is still in memory, but is temporarily disabled so you can paint on the protected colors. Creating a stencil uses memory even if the stencil is turned off. Free deletes the stencil and deallocates the memory it was using. Stencils can be loaded and saved as separate items. The stencil file requesters work like all other requesters in the program. Let's skip over the light table menu item for now. Since it is used primarily for animations, 
It will be discussed in the Animation Basics segment. Fixing the background locks the current picture. This allows you to draw on it without permanently losing any of the background. You can erase any paint you apply after fixing the background by clicking Clear or by erasing with the right mouse button. Free unlocks the background and merges it with anything that has been painted over it. It also frees up the memory that was allocated fixing the background. When you select Lock Foreground, you define as a stencil those areas on the page that you have painted since fixing the background, regardless of the color of those areas. Anti-aliasing is a smoothing process which eliminates or reduces the jagged edges apparent in lines that aren't precisely vertical or horizontal. The effectiveness of anti-aliasing is dependent on the range of colors in the palette. It is especially good at smoothing the jagged lines in a brush that results from rotating or shrinking it in perspective mode. When you choose one of the process options, a capital P appears in the middle of the title bar. The quality of the process option is dependent on the colors available in the palette. With tint, the color you are painting with, adjust the hue and saturation of the colors underneath it in the direction of the color you are applying. Use this option if you want to create shading effects over a number of colors on the screen or to colorize a grayscale image. Use hue with any painting tool to adjust the hue of a colored area of your image to match the hue of your brush. Value leaves the hue and saturation alone but changes the value or darkness to match that of your current brush color. When you choose translucency, a T appears in the middle of the title bar. Painting with translucency on has the effect of laying a transparency or colored filter over a portion of your picture. The transparency is tinted towards the current brush or foreground color. The degree of tinting is determined by the percentage set in the translucency requester. The perspective submenu contains options for manipulating a brush in three dimensions. Do puts you into perspective mode. Your brush is represented by a four cell matrix which you can manipulate with keypad commands. The amount of rotation for the axes X, Y, and Z is given in degrees on the right side of the title bar. The center of perspective is indicated by a crosshair. You can paint an image of the rotated brush at any time by clicking. Here is a diagram that shows how perspective rotations are controlled through the keypad on your keyboard. Fill screen fills the screen with the current brush in its current state of 3D rotation. Reset will restore the brush and other perspective settings to their original state. Center lets you set the perspective center or horizon in your perspective landscape. Settings displays the perspective requester. When you're in the perspective mode, you can also display this requester by right-clicking the grid tool. The following options are available. You can set the dimensions for a grid in three-dimensional space. The Z dimension automatically takes the same value as the Y dimension. Clicking from brush sets the X and Y grid values to correspond to the width and height of the current brush. Angle step specifies the rotation increment used in conjunction with the shift key and appropriate keyboard rotation keys. This value defaults to 90 degrees. Screen, the default setting, uses the screen coordinate system when rotating the brush on the X, Y, and Z axes. Brush rotates the brush relative to the current brush coordinate system. Angle and position buttons let you choose whether the angles of rotation or the position of the brush in three-dimensional space are displayed in the title bar. The Press menu contains a list of options that you can toggle on or off to suit your work habits. When you choose an option, a check mark appears to the left of the option to indicate it is turned on. Choosing the option again turns the option off and removes the check mark. The Chords option turns on the coordinate display in the upper right-hand portion of the title bar. Simply moving the mouse displays the current position of the cursor. Turn on fast feedback when working with large or complicated brushes while using the line or unfilled shape tools. Fast feedback lets you draw your lines or shapes using the smallest one pixel brush for feedback and then completes the design using the actual brush. This increases the response speed while you are drawing but does not affect the final image. Multicycle works in conjunction with the cycle paint mode from the mode menu. With multicycle turned on, painting with multicolored brush in cycle mode cycles each color in the brush, provided the color is in a cycle range. Because the Amiga's pixels are not perfectly square, circles and squares drawn with the shape tools are not perfectly round or square. If you wish to draw true circles or squares, select B square. This will square all the built-in brushes, the appropriate shape tools, and symmetry. Workbench toggles the Amiga workbench on and off. You will have more memory available when the workbench is off. 
If you pick up a brush with Exclude Brush On and the grid is selected, you will exclude a one pixel border on the right and bottom edges of your brush. Auto Transparency modifies the way brush pickup works. With Auto Transparency turned on, if the four corners are the same color, that color becomes the transparent color. Otherwise, the current background color remains the transparent color. When no icons is turned on, your files are saved without workbench icons. With Auto Grid turned on, the perspective grid is resized automatically to match any custom brush you choose to load or pick up. This option affects only the grid in perspective and not the standard grid. By default, the program calculates the origin or zero point of coordinates of the cursor position from the lower left corner of the screen. If you would rather have the origin calculated from the upper left, choose Origin UL. Fast Adjust tells Deluxe Paint not to attempt to correct the fringing effects that appear along the right side of your brush while it is moving in ham. This improves the speed of the brush movement. We have now covered most of the items in the pull down menus. Remember to watch the title bar as you work. It will keep you informed of any settings that are active. You should now be thinking of all the variations possible by combining the different effects that are accessed through menus with the many toolbox items. If you want, pause this tape for a few moments while you try out what you have learned. When we continue, we will be explaining the basics of animation. This segment introduces you to Deluxe Paint 4's animation features. We'll begin by explaining the basic model for animation and then cover each of the different ways to create animations with the program. The basic idea behind animation in Deluxe Paint is that instead of having a single page to paint on, you have multiple pages that you can paint on and flip through. By creating images that differ slightly from page to page and then playing them back in rapid succession, you create the illusion of motion. Under the Anim menu, Load displays the Load Anim Requester. This requester works like the Load Picture Requester. When you load an animation, it replaces the one currently in memory. When you append an animation, the animation being loaded is added to the end of your current animation. Save displays the Save Anim Requester. The Frames Edit box in the Save Anim Requester let you save a section of your animation as a standalone animation. The first step in building your own animation is to create the frames to paint on. The Frames menu item presents a submenu of options for manipulating the frames in your animation. Set Number displays the Set Frame Count Requester. Deluxe Paint will allocate as many frames as are requested, assuming that there is enough memory. Add Frames displays a requester that lets you add any number of frames after the current frame. Deluxe Paint copies the contents of the current frame to the added frames and makes the last new frame the current one. Copy Frames displays a requester that lets you copy the current frame onto a range of frames or onto all the frames of your animation sequence. Use the Insert Before Frame edit box to place the copied range of frames elsewhere in your animation. Delete Frames displays a requester that lets you delete the current frame, a range of frames, or all frames in your animation sequence. Control displays a submenu of options for moving around in your animation frames and for playing the animation. The control panel presents an interface for working through and playing your animation. When active, it appears at the bottom of the screen. It's useful to have it visible while you work on your animation sequence. If you want to remove it while you're animating, choose Control Panel Off from the Anim menu or Alt A on the keyboard. The frame slider helps you keep track of where you are in your animation sequence. You can move to a specific frame by dragging the slider or by clicking either side of it. One click moves the animation one frame. Clicking on the scroll arrows will take you to the first or last frame. The icons on the left hand side of the control panel are much like those found on a video recorder. We will identify each of these as we discuss its pull down menu equivalent. The Anim control submenu provides several items in addition to menu versions of the control panel icons. Set Rate displays the set frames per second requester. The default setting is 30 frames per second. The speed range is between 1 and 60 frames per second. You can set the frames per second rate by entering a number in the edit field and clicking OK. You can also adjust the speed using the left and right cursor keys while the animation is playing. 
Set Range displays the Set Play Range requester, which instructs Deluxe Paint to play a range of frames or all frames in your animation. Previous steps to the previous frame in the animation sequence. If the current frame is the first frame, the position wraps around to the last frame. Next steps to the next frame in the animation sequence. If the current frame is the last frame, the position wraps to the first frame. Go to displays the go to frame requester. This requester lets you jump to any of the available animation frames. Play plays the animation at the speed set in the set rate requester. The animation sequence will continue cycling until you press the space bar. You can reverse the direction of playback by pressing R on the keyboard while the animation is playing. Play once plays the animation sequence through one time only. Ping pong plays the animation sequence as in play, but plays the sequence forward and then backward continuously. So far, the controls that you have been seeing would require tedious painting, advancing to the next frame, and then painting some more. For creating animations that involve simple movement of an object, Deluxe Paint provides a much easier method called Anim Painting. Essentially, the frames flip automatically while you paint. The Alt key is the Anim Painting key. If you hold down the Alt key at the time you press the mouse button, the animation frames will flip with each stamp of the brush, so that you stamp only once on each frame. The frame counter in the title bar changes to show you what frame you are on. When you reach the last frame, you loop back to frame 1. Now you know how to create frames, move through frames one by one in paint, and how to anim paint. Anim painting is especially powerful if you have an animated brush to paint with. An animated brush, or anim brush, is a special type of brush that has more than just one cell associated with it. When you paint with an anim brush, the brush cycles through its frames automatically as you paint. The brush will continuously cycle on the current animation frame unless you hold down the Alt key when you press the mouse button, in which case the brush will paint each of its frames separately into each of the animation sequence frames. Load and Save displays the Load and Save Anim Brush requesters. These requesters are identical in function to the Load Brush and Save Brush requesters, except that these are for Anim Brushes. Selecting Pickup is similar to selecting the brush selector from the toolbox. However, when you pick up an Anim Brush, you pick up all the cells that make up the animated sequence. If you want to make an Anim Brush from only a few of the frames in your animation, type in the number of cells that will compose your Anim Brush into the requester. Holding down the Alt key while picking up a brush with the brush selector is the same as choosing Anim Brush Pickup. When you begin to combine Anim Brushes into large animations, you'll find that occasionally you'll want to change the rate at which an Anim Brush transforms. You might even want to change the direction in which the Anim Brush plays. This can be accomplished with the Anim Brush Settings menu item. Current lets you type in the value for the brush cell that you want to start with. When the requester is not displayed, you can step backward and forward through the cells of your Anim Brush by pressing 7 or 8 on the keyboard. Shift 7 steps to the first cell, Shift 8 steps to the last cell. The duration box in the Anim Brush Settings requester lets you specify how many stamps of the brush the animation uses to complete its cycle. If the duration number is larger than the number of cells you have, the brush steps through its frames more slowly. If the duration number is smaller than the number of cells, the brush steps more quickly. The three direction icons give you the choice of flipping forward, flipping backward, or ping-ponging through the cells of your anim brush as you paint. The ping-pong option automatically plays your anim brush to the end and back again repeatedly without doubling the first or last cell of the brush. Use makes the last anim brush that you picked up or loaded the current brush. Free releases the memory used by the current anim brush. Now we want to show you more ways to move objects on the screen. The Move Requester does exactly what its name implies. It lets you automatically move and rotate a brush over a number of animation frames. More importantly, you can move or rotate the brush in all three dimensions. To create impressive animations, you'll need to know how each feature of the Move Requester works. The Distance Edit boxes let you specify the total distance that the brush will move along the X, Y, and Z axes in your animation. The Angle Edit boxes let you specify the total angle in degrees that the brush will be rotated about the X, Y, or Z axes. The values for distances or angles can be either positive or negative. You can set the brush to move on the brush axes or the screen axes by clicking the Brush Action button to the right of the Edit boxes. The default setting is for the brush to move along the screen axes and to rotate around the brush axes. 
Click Clear to zero out all the distance and angle values. Click Go Back to restore the brush's starting position for the next movement to the last place you manually clicked it down. Use the cyclic button to tell Deluxe Paint which of the two kinds of moves you want. For example, if Deluxe Paint stamps a brush 360 degrees with Cycle On, the same image would be on the first and last frames. This would cause the animation to hiccup when played continuously. You can see that the rotation at the top of the screen, which was drawn with Cycle Off, is smooth. The Ease Out and Ease In edit boxes let you specify a number of frames over which the brush can accelerate or decelerate in your animation. The primary advantage of these features is that you can make the brush movement smooth at its beginning and ending points. Count sets the number of times the brush is painted to complete the total movement and rotation as specified by the distance and angle edit boxes. The direction options control the direction of the move and the direction of the recording. The Go From button is the default setting for movement. With this option selected, the settings in the Move Requester are used to paint the motion away from the point where you stamped your brush. With the Come To option selected, the settings in the Move Requester are used to paint the motion toward the point where you stamped your brush. This option is most useful when it's easier to specify the position where you want the move to end, rather than to specify its beginning. The Record options let you specify the direction in which Deluxe Paint paints the frames of your move. Forward is the default, and paints the frames by advancing forward. In Place causes Deluxe Paint to paint all the move on the current frame. Backward paints the frames by flipping backwards through the animation. Load displays the Load Move Requester. From here, you can load move settings that you entered and saved with the Save Move Requester. When you load a move, you are loading only the settings for the Move Requester. Save displays the Save Move Requester, allowing you to save the settings of the current move. This requester works just like the Save Picture Requester. Preview is used to view, in a wireframe mode, a move that has been set up. When the preview is complete, the Move Requester returns. To interrupt the preview and return to the Move Requester, Hit the space bar. The Trails button is available only if you have more than one animation frame allocated. On each frame you get the sum total of all the draws up to this point. The net effect is that of leaving trails of the brush as it moves. With Fill, the move specified is used to draw a filled perspective plane based on the rotation of the current brush. Draw executes the move you have specified, causing the brush to be drawn into an animation sequence. Cancel restores any settings that have been changed and exits the Move Requester. Exit leaves the Move Requester and keeps all the settings that have been entered. A way to create an unusual anim brush is to transform the image and shape of one custom brush into that of a second custom brush. This special feature, called Metamorphosis, can create some stunning effects. In this example, we'll use two different custom brushes that are included with Deluxe Paint 4. The first brush looks like an egg. We'll put this brush in the spare buffer so we can load a second brush without losing the first one. The other brush is a chicken. We now have two custom brushes in memory. When we choose Spare Metamorph from the Brush menu, the Make Anim Brush Requester appears. We'll enter the number of the Anim Brush cells that we want and click OK. It takes a couple of minutes for Deluxe Paint to metamorphose the two custom brushes into one Anim Brush. After stamping the new anim brush onto a series of frames, we can see an egg metamorphose into a chicken and back into an egg over and over. The light table effect simulates the onion skin techniques used by traditional animation artists. The most obvious place to access the light table feature is from the anim control panel. However, if you prefer, you can also access this feature and its options from the effects menu or from keyboard equivalents. Light table on off activates or deactivates the light table. Merge combines all of the currently viewed images into the current frame and turns off the light table so you can see the result as it actually appears. You cannot undo this merge command. When dim is on, all frames displayed on the light table except the current frame appear dimmed. You can easily see at a glance which frame you are working on. Dim is on by default. This option applies to all screen format modes except ham. Two back shows or hides the frame that is two frames before the current frame in the light table. Previous shows or hides the frame immediately preceding the current frame in the light table. And next shows or hides the frame immediately following the current frame in the light table. 
Spare shows or hides the scratch page in the light table. With the background visible, you can easily align animated characters without having to worry about accidentally ruining the background image. And finally, the method menu contains two sub-menu options. The compressed method offers the advantage of permitting many more animation frames at one time. It does have a couple of disadvantages though. It is slower than the expanded method when anim painting, and loading and saving are slower. The expanded method represents the simplest of the two memory models, where all of the memory for each animation frame is allocated. One final note is that when you click clear with multiple frames, Deluxe Paint gives you the option of clearing only the current frame, a range of frames, or all frames in your animation. While all of this may seem overwhelming, with just a little practice, you'll find yourself creating animations quite easily. We hope this video has been informative as well as entertaining for you. With the techniques demonstrated, you should be able to use Deluxe Paint for effectively in no time at all. To learn more tricks and tips for D-Paint, consider getting Volume 2 in this video series. Advanced techniques with Deluxe Paint 4 will show you how to combine the different tools to achieve spectacular effects with professional results. Deluxe Paint 4 is the kind of software that invites experimentation. So feel free to play around with its various tools and effects. You may even discover an artistic side you never knew you had.